Thank you very much for tuning in. Today is March the 29th, and it seems like spring is about ready to get really started. Certainly we have had a tremendous amount of work to get done in relationship to the Superstorm Sandy. Uh, we're very fortunate to still be able to provide services and resources, and we're continuing to build that kind of a relationship. I'm here now with the Honorable Mayor Wayne Smith. Herbert, I'm delighted as always to see you. Before we get into the show, uh, let me commend you uh, for two things. And I always try to make sure that we pay the proper respect. One, for making sure that these airwaves uh, get relevant and, and pertinent information to the community. So that's the number one. Number two, I certainly enjoyed uh, attending your matriarch's function on last Saturday, uh, where at least at least a couple of Urbitonians were involved with that as well. One um, one of the honorees was Darlene Rees from the Determined to Achieve Network, which does work around the needs of special needs children. And also, you had uh, in your performance category uh, one of our local uh, artists, Tremaine Howell, who had an opportunity to sing and uh, sell his CD. So, and, and of course, one of our local branches of Investors Bank, the branch manager. Uh, Lanice was honored, so we had a heavily Irvington-influenced <laughs> yes, matriarch program, and so I want to commend you uh, for that. And today we move, I guess, right into another phase of, of, of some of the introduction because we had the Center for a Just Cause, who has now embraced the Irvington family, and we have Charles Anthony here, who I know we'll be talking to in a minute. But we have some other exciting news to talk about in May, which happens to be my birthday that day, too, mm -hmm. by the way. Yes, indeed, I heard. <laughs> so, you know, we definitely are going to do something to surprise you. And I'm going to let you know. You might as well be prepared. Right, so I want to make sure you show up. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll definitely go be there. I had a big bash the night before. So okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, but I'll be there on the you know, end. And certainly, yeah. you know, your uh, <clears throat> participation in relationship to seeing what is going on with our organization and others. You know, mm -hmm. you've been very supportive and have have provided resources and opened up your town as a way in which individuals can be able to incubate mm -hmm. and build uh, really good foundations. And we're certainly very privileged and very happy to be a part of uh, your legacy. Mm -hmm. um, today, uh, we really are uh, happy also to have with us Mr. Charles Anthony. Um, yes. <clears throat> who heads uh, for a just cause, mm -hmm. and uh, the organization itself has done a tremendous uh, amount of work in relationship to help provide resources to community-based organizations. Yes. Uh, they have been very uh, fortunate to deal with a number of different organizations that have been uh, supportive to their effort to do outreach and provide services that are necessary to see a healthy and safe neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. Anthony, for giving us a chance to really talk with you and to introduce you to our uh, group of individuals that have been very supportive to our effort here at, at uh, the uh, cable uh, network uh, that we're working with uh, Mayor Wayne Smith on. Mm -hmm. We're looking to expand it and uh, we're definitely working very diligently in relationship, especially to the type of visibility and leadership role that you have uh, throughout the state, Mayor Smith. What we really want to do, though, is get people to understand what For A Just Cause is and how it is going to be effectively part of now our relationship of outreach. Well, um, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Glenn, for having me here. And I would like to thank the mayor for also uh, allowing us uh, to come into Irvington to be able to provide some of the services and create some of the awareness uh, of what we do. Uh, the organization for a just cause is exactly what the name says. What we do is is that we work with small organizations, uh, business and uh, uh, people in the community that are on the ground to be able to fulfill some of the uh, organization's uh, needs and requirements that they necessarily can't do themselves. Uh, we do this uh, through different collaborations uh, with business, with bigger organizations, with bigger business, and we bring all of this to the table uh, to, to bring awareness to that group and to the people that they serve. 
which is very important, <clears throat> especially in this day and age when a number of different organizations are limited to any kind of sponsorships. It is really more advantageous to begin to help organizations learn how they can survive independently. Yes, yes, the, and, and this independence is, uh, uh, like you spoke about, uh, in the matriarch uh, awards dinner, it's about uh, responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, how you move from where you are to where you can be, and it's not it's not a a jump a big leap. It's very small steps, and these small steps are being done every day. They're being done every day by people in which they do not get the recognition. And some of them, they do get the recognition, but the steps are still being, are still going on. So what we do is, is that we come in and we take care of the stuff in the background. So in taking care of the stuff in the background, some of the fundraising, some of the sponsorship, some of the organization, uh, that way you can relieve yourself or relieve the organization's volunteers to be able to continue to provide the services that you necessarily need to do. And we got to admit, <clears throat> your organization was very supportive, and especially in the Kwanzaa celebration that we oh, had here in Irvington. Yeah, and uh, they came through in relationship to helping the Determined to Achieve Parenting Network, yes. which is also part of our community-based organization, um, the coalition that we have created. The emphasis behind what we're about ready uh, to put into existence really evolves now around some of the leadership that you have been able to develop, Mayor Smith, in relationship to health and wellness. Mm -hmm. We stepped up, we kept partners last year, helped to work to continue to generate a motive that you saw very important. How do we really build health awareness in the urban communities? And we created Health and Wellness Day here in Irvington. Mm -hmm. Now we are partnering with a Just Cause and the Center for cause awareness mm -hmm. and both of these organizations are going to be instrumental in helping us to prepare another phase of our effort to raise awareness about health and wellness. Why don't you share with us right now, Mayor, what other areas of health and wellness you have been able to generate here? Yeah, in some of these ideas stemmed from uh, the League of Municipalities which acts, encourage mayors to do what they call wellness campaigns. And so, so out of that, we decided that over the last few years, we've been focused on this. And one of the things about a community, and, 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 and let me put this in some context, mm -hmm. in the light of hospital closings, uh, shifting in health care needs for people, people losing their jobs and not having health insurance. So uh, I like Charles's analogy. He, he said everything but this phrase, um, you can give a man a fish yes, or you can teach him to fish. fish. So no matter what you have in terms of your resources around health care, mm -hmm. you can first eat right, yes, sir. exercise, mm -hmm. do those things mm -hmm. that nobody can do for you, you. but you. you. And so we want to encourage people to use our parks for walking and running and playing and sports. And not only just young people can mm -hmm. utilize those mm -hmm. things, but uh, you know our, our, our middle-aged people, our young adults, uh, even use our Gatling Center. We've got a Zumba class over there now that's uh, pretty exciting that the adults have embraced, particularly the women, in a significant way. So we want people, as, as uh, uh, Michelle Obama has encouraged, to get up and start moving and mm -hmm. get some activity going. We've sponsored walks. We've got some others coming. We want people to be aware of what they're eating. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that uh, For a Just Cause has done as part of their wellness tour, and I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to attend, it did a couple of things because a lot of these things are, are synergistic mm -hmm. with what we do. Um, so the Path Mart in Irvington on Lions Avenue, a very busy place, mm -hmm. but you know we've had throughout the state a number of path marks closed. Yes. So when you bring these kinds of activities on site, mm -hmm. you create 
people, yes. visibility. People yes. want to come to see what's happening. So they go in the shop, the yes. item they forgot, or they say, well, since I'm here. Yes. So so we create a marketing tool mm -hmm. for some local businesses. So it was very good to mm -hmm. see them at Pathmark. And then they're also marketing a product, the, 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 the Collard Green Egg Roll, yes, right. which, yeah. one of, which a local business, local catering organization, the Taste of Soul is engaged in. So, so that was good. So all of these things around health. And then in addition, if, if anybody contacts our health department, um, they'll find out that our health officer, uh, Tief Nazar, has been very proactive. Usually, uh, at least a, uh, three or four times a month, mm -hmm. they have some free screening, if, whether that they bring the mobile unit right in front of town hall. Mm -hmm. So he is really amped up, if mm -hmm. you will, mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. The ability to, you know, whether it's UMDMJ, whether it's Beth Israel, all those folks coming in to provide uh, health screenings and so forth. And, and then, you know, people, a lot of people don't know. We had a lady in my office yesterday who was having just a tremendous challenge around a 16-year-old who was running away from home. And so we, we used one of our local resources that, you know, there was, there's obviously was a need for some mental health counseling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that the mother was under stress, mm -hmm. the child was mm -hmm. under stress. So we have people forget we have the Irvington Counseling Center, mm -hmm. which provides these a very small agency on Wagner Place that provides and they take Medicare, Medicaid, they're, not, they're a non profit. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess if you don't have any money, they'll work with you too. Yes. And so, um, you know, but those are the kinds of things that we have right here locally that. Uh, that guard our health mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we can't, you can't, if, if you don't have a job, yeah. if you're unhealthy and try to get one, yes. you can't come to work, yes. they ain't gonna do you, no good. Do you no good. So, you know, we gotta guard what we can guard ourselves. And so that's what this whole wellness campaign mm -hmm. is about. And uh, Herb has been a great point. And it's, in, it's interesting as we get older, you wanna make sure, you know, whether the potential health challenges that we all get confronted with, whether it's high blood pressure or whatever the case may be, you got to watch your weight, bring it down, mm -hmm. make sure. So all those things are important. So mm -hmm. we, as a public function mm -hmm. of our health department and as our general uh, uh, trying to establish well-being in the community, that's what this whole mayor's wellness campaign is about. So both of you have played a significant role in just getting the word out. We are up against major media exposure. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge is to always be on the ground, if you will, trying to educate. But we just did something pr pretty interesting to her. I, mean, I was very excited about this because this started out as a very small kind of project. And I have to give Jihada Sharif some credit. Mm -hmm. She um, came in on our after school program. We get some money and, and we're affected by the se se sequester mm -hmm. next year, federal money. We have a very a uh, active after school program. Okay in Berkeley Terrace Park. It's funded by the Eisenhower Foundation, some federal money. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have a mentorship component to okay. it. So Jahada came in as a mentor working with the young people. And she runs an organization called the Creative Spirits of New Jersey. They've done plays and skits around the region. And so what she introduced as a mentor to mm -hmm. the young people was this idea of using the performing arts as an educational tool. So she started doing skits. Mm -hmm. And then she had a passion around uh, preventing smoking, preventing young people from smoking, and getting older people to stop smoking. So they started to create these little skits, and they had uh, they got some major uh, newspaper coverage around these little uh, kids. And, and there's a day that they call kick butts, not in the bullying yes, sense, yes. but in cigarette butts. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so they did a couple. One year they did this big thing around kick butts, had the skits, really good. So this year they did something pretty innovative. They decided to take the skits and put them to film. Yes, and and what they did though around the kids doing their thing, and you can go on Facebook because I've been sharing it mm -hmm. on Facebook. Um, they actually brought other health professionals in to educate. I mean, they showed some of the devastating scenery of what happens to the throat, what happens internally to your organs. I mean, it was really an eye open. I had a, a lady yesterday, I was down at Applebee's in Newark for a short ceremony of Miss Colvin, who was the forerunner to Rosa Parks. She was the first one who defied mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, the uh, segregated bus laws mm -hmm. down there in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. But she um, she didn't get the recognition. She was younger, and I think she had a child, mm -hmm. and so they they didn't they didn't promote that. But mm -hmm. she actually started this whole quest of mm -hmm. so the people's organization. And she was right up private, here. The people's organization started, private, started, actually yeah, honored her at Abyssinian Baptist Church. Her, yeah. So what happened is they had brought her in because she lives in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. She's actually a resident of the Bronx. My alma mater. 
<laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're old whole time. <laughs> I'm a graduate of the Bronx. <laughs> the boogie down. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so they brought her in the Applebee's before Abyssinian. Mm -hmm. So they say, Mayor, could you, would you be willing to present something to us? So I was really honored to present a proclamation to her mm -hmm. and a um, key to the city. It was beautiful. And so one of the young ladies who was at this function said, I just saw you in a movie. So now, a, a, a local guy, mm -hmm. and, sh and, and, and uh, Herb has worked with him, Shahid Shahid, mm -hmm. did a film, and we did a cameo in the films. I thought she was talking about that, the red right, bow tie. She was she talking, talking about, about the anti-smoking thing. Yeah. She said she saw it. She yeah. saw it. So I'm, I'm like, oh, you saw the, uh, the red, red bow tie? <laughs> she said, Which no. is a great movie. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, no, I didn't see that. I saw uh, mm -hmm. the anti the jihad is that. I saw. Right. She said, oh, you did a really good job kind of laying out the right. problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting because that, that media giant, and so it was interesting. And, Herb, you, you probably don't know this, but one of my, before I was in elective office, one of the things that I took on, and I was working actually for an elected official, the first African-American mayor of this city. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I got involved with a group and became the chairman of it. It was an Essex and Union County group. Called, and it was, it was a federally funded program called ASSIST. Mm -hmm. It was the American Stop, Stop Smoking Intervention Study. Okay. okay. Very well funded uh, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And we, we were making progress okay. with curtailing people from engaging in cigarette smoking. The data, if it, particularly for young people, was going down. But now, what did we see in the 90s? The implosion of hip hop artists who were smoking, whether it was blunts or the cigars, making mm -hmm. that popular again, mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. and so smoking began to become a cool thing again. Mm -hmm. So, and, and so, how do you beat back that kind of mm -hmm. uh, media giant where the kids are listening at these guys who and they want to be with the girls and they're smoking there between the blunts mm -hmm. and the, the cigars? Mm -hmm. So people, mm -hmm. kids think that's cool again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, getting media message out which shows what happens to your internal organs, yes. what happens to your throat, mm -hmm. and having young people. So here's something, it was, it hurt, it was like, I got to tell a story because I don't know if people are going to get out to you. See, so we had these young kids, it was funny, one of the scenes I remember, the young guy, he's dressed up in his little business suit. So he walks into, he's walking into a local store. So there's a kid out there, and of course these are all kids, they're mm -hmm. playing these parts. She so said, would you go in there and buy me a cigarette, this, that, and the other, you know, a Lucy? So the guy says, get out of here. You ain't supposed to be smoking. You're too young. So he goes into the store. <laughs> it's so funny. He asks the lady who's running the store, let me get a Black Enterprise magazine. <laughs> <laughs> so they had a buddy. He buys the Black Enterprise. He says, yeah, this lady's out here trying, the young kid is out there trying to solicit people. To so, so this other young lady comes up, and the kid approaches her. Would you buy me? She said, well, what you going to give me if I buy you? So he he essentially pays her off to buy him cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Goes inside. So the guy with the black enterprise says, "Did you? Are you buying cigarettes for that kid?" So, so the store owner says, "Yeah. What are you doing?" So she said, "Well, what do you care? You're making the money." So her mind goes back to they show the scene with the, this big car okay. making money. She yeah. Don't care. So she sells the thing. So then now the, the guy with the black enterprise he goes out and gets the police. Hey, look, they can sell cigarettes to minors. So they locked the. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was very good excellent. Plot. Yeah, yeah, it was very a, good point. Yeah. yeah, and then they had a family situation yeah, yeah. where a father comes yeah. home, he wants to relax smoking. But that, and all we, these and, are part of our wellness campaign. And we showcased them last year mm -hmm. at the first uh, Irvington Health and Wellness Day mm -hmm. when she did the skits, and it was part of our. our oh, media that's right. Plan we had the little, yeah, that's right. To Absolutely. raise awareness yeah, around yeah. the yeah. concerns so, that we're building. So we're becoming mm -hmm. a little bit exactly. innovative around. So now to we will be able to showcase some parts of that event. What we're really looking at is again where we talked about what Irvington Health uh, is doing in relationship to getting the mobile units to come in and do screenings and we certainly will be having that as one of the next activities that we will be showcasing uh, in uh, the month of May on May 18th, the mayor's birthday. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, Charles, <coughs> was the idea of a mobile unit. Okay. Now we are partnering with you and we're very happy to come and in, get involved with another outreach effort from mm -hmm. a very well known brand of food services, yes. Sylvia's Restaurant out of Harlem. Yes. Why don't you share with us where that vision came from and how it's going to meet our interest? Well, the, the Sylvia's Soul Tour is a cause marketing event. And being a cause marketing event, we pick particular causes in which we bring awareness to. Oh, uh, and and it has been the American Cancer Society. We partner with uh, several organizations uh, in bringing their information. And as, as the mayor 
uh, spoke about in Irvington, we had the Recreation Department, we had Little League, we had the American Cancer Society. Uh, we bring all of this together in which 400 people can have the opportunity to gain that knowledge right there within that block of time and not only gain that knowledge, but gain knowledge, gain treatment, gain accessibility to the people in which they can receive help from. Um, as we talk about our co community, uh, our community is so wide open, but it's also so closed in which we have information, but we do not disseminate that information. We do not go out and seek information from uh, the particular organizations that can really uh, assist us or really uh, uh, help us. And so what we do is, is that we bring those organizations in so that you can put a face to the name and dispel that myth mm -hmm. about they ain't gonna help me. they're not going to help me anyway. And so with the health and wellness, um, it's something that strikes to my heart as well. Uh, a year and a half ago, uh, I had eaten myself into type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. I weighed 320 pounds. Um, and that was a compelling story at the Matrox lunch. And that was mm -hmm. a real, I, Charles, really compelling story. I come home from work. Um, uh, uh, my daughter is 20 years old now. I gave up smoking on the Great American Smokeout. Mm. So that was 20 years ago. Um, uh, my personal story about uh, different abuse itch, uh, issues as far as alcoholism and stuff, I've given that up. And so my main thing was ice cream. <laughs> I would come home and me and Ben and Jerry's and Hagen and Dawes were hanging out, huh? <laughs> and Turkey Hill. Oh, we we sit down, me and my spoon. Uh -huh. I had my I had my own spoon. Washed it every night, put it in my cup. Me, my spoon. We sit down and we would dispel the things of the day, and. I blew up to 320 pounds, and not even thinking, about and not even thinking about it. You eat mm -hmm. one of those pints of hey. Jerry's like it's a like it's a little yeah. cone. Oh, well, yeah. you think because that it's refreshing? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You really think yeah. it's refreshing? And there's a lot of diets that are out here, mm -hmm. uh, like even when you eat a lot of meat. You know, mm -hmm. meat is protein, meat is good, but if you're not burning it, it, it really really turns it, into it, bad. It, it it's a balance. It, it, yeah, exactly. It does. Yeah. So, and as we get older too, you gotta. Also add in age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I ain't in a hurry to go there. Yeah, right. I you want know, all the age I But age, age, age is a major factor because <laughs> as you grow older, that metabolism doesn't burn up that Absolutely. energy as much as it does. The and then thing. you see a lot of us, especially African Americans, mm -hmm. filling out in the wrong ways because we think that everything subconsciously is healthy. Yes. And uh, yes. let me go ahead and let you finish yeah. your story. And, and so what, what we did, so what we did was, is, is that, um, Sylvia Soul Food Tour, collard greens, black eyed peas, sassy rice, cornbread, uh, barbecue chicken, fried chicken, barbecue ribs. That's our staples. But in it being our staples, how do we make it healthier? Mm -hmm. mm. So you got your, your baked fish and That's all those awesome. kinds of things. How right. do we make it healthier? How do mm. we reduce the calorie right. intake? Mm -hmm. How do we, how do we, how do we? Mm -hmm. And that's the personal responsibility part okay. of the health and wellness. Mm -hmm. All right. My personal responsibility of mm -hmm. dealing with my diabetes mm -hmm. and my weight loss was I'm, 50, I'm 52 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm not going out running. Mm -hmm. So I chose walking. I'm not going out to do this, so I chose vegetables. And in doing vegetables, I also had to learn how to do calorie counting. Now, <clears throat> if you sit back and you do calorie counting and you do not understand how to read the nutritional label on the back, it's mm -hmm. very confusing. Mm -hmm. If you do carb counting and you do not understand how to do the nutritional label on the back, it's very difficult. So I, we sit down with a nutritionist, the nutritionist 
uh, that happened to do the diabetes class and she said to us, she says, you want to eat so many times a day and doing and eating so many times a day, you want to stay between, you want to stay at about 60 total carbs. Mm -hmm. 60 total carbs will give you something around 2,000, a 2,000 calorie diet. Okay. So what I did was, is is that your hand, right? Four it's ounces. about how much it is. Yeah. It's about four ounces of meat. Right. If you cup your hand, you've got a cup of rice or a cup of noodles. Mm -hmm. So you can visually see in your mind portion control. Mm -hmm. If you take a salad, if you eat a salad and you take your plate and you put your salad on your plate first and then you put your piece of meat on there, mm -hmm. the plate's about full. True. So it comes down to how can we take Sylvia's soul food right, and turn it into an education turn piece. Turn it into an educational piece to bring awareness mm -hmm. about this particular cause. And looking at it from that perspective is the reason why we're so excited about the partnership that we're about ready to deal with in relationship to helping to expand the relationship of educating people about health and nutrition and how we're going to use the Sylvia's Name brand not only as an effort uh, to raise awareness about healthy eating but also as an opportunity where we can be able to deal with it in a fundraising process okay. so that we can continue to expand this opportunity to share this information with others. And as the mayor just shared with us that there are a number of different areas that we are concerned about when it comes to health and wellness, whether it's from smoking to knowing how to be able to eat properly mm -hmm. and even to the extent of public safety. Exactly. You know, there is an issue that we have been discussing, Mayor, in regard to how, you know, the problems with our crime in our community is mm -hmm. a health issue. issue. And those are some of the things that we will be showcasing in our first attempt at this particular event. We're also going to have auditions for a talent contest. So we're asking individuals to call up and register to be part of our talent contest a search. And it's going to be so part of the, the opportunity that we have as we develop <laughs> other relationships yes. with the Sylvia's Food Products and the We Care Partners Soul Tour Health and Wellness Activity mm -hmm. to build the consciousness of how we need to begin to raise awareness about how do we prevent people from dying from curable diseases. Exactly. One of the things that I do want to add is that a lot of my effort now has really reached a higher level. Just recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I lost my brother oh, yeah. to a sudden illness. Yeah. He had a heart attack, mm -hmm. and it was based upon the problems of people not being aware of how to identify to a person having a heart attack. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, Charles. My brother was 52 years old as well, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, he had just uh, gotten... Uh, his uh, information in relationship to escalating diabetes mm -hmm. and high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And it so happens that his, high, his blood pressure went high, he got additional medication, and unfortunately he was unable to be able to compensate for it. So I'm very motivated because now I have been really part of now a large society of individuals who have lost loved ones behind not knowing how to be able to help them in the time of an emergency. And we're going to be able to focus on that. The Sylvia Soul Tour is really a major component and we're going to be able to use it as a way in which it can be a tool yes. to help educate people throughout our communities and abroad. Yes. I believe that you're also challenging this whole opportunity in Philadelphia right now as uh, well. Well, uh, we travel throughout the tri-state area uh, performing, uh, not well, performing or putting on the Sylvia Soul Tours. Uh, we have two dates in Philadelphia and then we'll be coming back to uh, we'll be we'll be coming back to I think it's uh, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that. But exactly we know you're going to be here with us so on May 18th. Yeah, May 18th. yeah we'll be May here 12, May 18th, 12, 12, 12, 12, at the yeah. Service Men's Clubhouse. Right. Exactly. And not only are we going to be having it, we're going to have panel discussions. We're going to have many of our supporters from the uh, Investors Bank, mm -hmm. who has been a very strong supporter of our efforts, and the health uh, professionals and allied employees uh, union. 
is going to also be part of educating us about the issues that are involved with making sure that we have good health facilities in our community and knowing how we can represent the workers that are there and sharing with them on how important they are to our community. So we're going to have a very strong opportunity to do outreach services. We're asking you to participate, get involved, call us and order your dinner in advance. Yes. You can always call us at 973-847-1883 or you can visit us on the internet at info at wecarepartners.com. Mayor Smith, you know, it's always a pleasure to have I'm you around to be here with you and, and Charles, uh, we're going to be looking forward to making the effort to see this as an accomplishment and hopefully we can be able to work with you especially in your other hat as being chairman of the urban mayors and see if we can have a forum that we can talk to some of the other leaders in our community get involved with this very Absolutely. important program. Yes, very good. Thank you very much for tuning in, Mayor. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Charles Anthony, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. And uh, we really appreciate you tuning in. Have a nice day and enjoy your holiday season. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.